Okay, now we're going to actually create some VMs. Now, I thought long and hard about how to do this. Um, initially, I was just going to show you how to create a VM, and then I was going to show you how to create a couple of them and cluster them. But that doesn't really give you the whole story, right? One of my big pet peeves when people do training like this is that they, they only show you how to do one little piece. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to create the entire thing. I'm going to show you how to put together the domain controller and add the the VMs to the domain and then add the disks to the VMs and then build SQL. So we're going to build this from the ground up. Okay. I'm going to show you how to do absolutely everything. And there's no better time to start than now. So first we're going to talk about setting up your network. Most of the time, this is going to be really easy. If you don't plan on doing a lot of traveling, so if you've just got a desktop or if you've got a laptop that's connected to your own network at home, then this will suit you just fine. You won't, you won't really have to do a lot of, a lot of extra stuff. So you can come here to the virtual network editor. Now, when you install VMware, and actually when you install most of them, I think Hyper-V makes you jump through a couple small hoops to get the networking piece done, but it's relatively easy to figure out, especially after you see what I do here. It's all more or less the same, right? There are some little nuances in how things are done, but for the most part, it's the same. And it's really easy to find resources online. So if, if I do something here and you and VMware and you've got Hyper-V or you've got the other one, VirtualBox, then, you know, those resources are out there. This stuff is really easy to come by. But by default, VMware itself will give you um, a, a host of networks, right? And so what you really want here is this auto bridging if you're going to be doing this on your own on a relatively stationary box, right? So if you've already got a network at home, you've already got a domain controller, then you can you can just set this to auto bridging and then you can create your new VMs and add them to that network and you'll be just fine, right? But if you don't have anything, if all you've got is a single workstation, say you've bought a single workstation for the purpose of putting together something like this, and you don't have any other any other boxes or any network then this is going to be for you okay at this point it doesn't matter if it's auto bridged you probably will want it to be auto bridged simply because you want to be able to get out to the network most of the time right but that being said um, we are going to do host only right here because i don't really care about getting out to the internet for this demo and so I'm going to host the entire thing just on my little laptop here. I've got two external drives. Um, the only reason I've got the external drives is because I don't have enough space on my main, uh, on my main internal drive on my laptop to house three VMs. And I could get away with just one drive, but it really gets kind of slow. I mean, when you're, when you're running two or three VMs off of a single drive, it, you know, it starts to take a long time to do simple tasks. So I'm going to put my domain controller on my laptop and then each one of the VMs on one of the drives and we'll split that IO up like that. Okay. And we're going to use this network here, the host only. So I'm going to cancel out of that. Now to create a VM is simply create a new virtual machine, right? You click next. Now here it gives you the hardware compatibility. We're going to go with nine. We don't, we're not going to need to port this to another version of VMware. So we're just going to leave it as it is. Okay. So I need the installer disk image, the ISO. This is for the windows, the version of windows that I want to install. I don't have to click this. I could say uh, I'll install an operating system later and then I can attach an ISO or a, or physical media to the box later on, but I want to go ahead and do it now. So let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and browse to an ISO image. I think I have it on here. Nope. I have it on here. Yep. In my ISO folder. It's going to take it a second. There we go. And so I've got some ISOs here and I am going to do uh, Windows Server 2012 R2. Let's go ahead and go with the latest and greatest, shall we? There we go. And it says here that it can't detect which operating disk, which operating system. Yeah, because uh, it doesn't necessarily recognize that specific version of Windows, but it doesn't matter. It'll be okay. So I'm going to click next. I'm going to say Windows. And here's where I get to pick the one. 
Now right here it does say Windows Server 2012. I'm on R2, it doesn't know about that yet, so that's okay. Virtual machine name. Let's call this my lab DC. We'll get really creative. I'm just gonna leave this uh, default on the C drive. How many processors do I want? Well, it's a DC. It's really not going to do a lot, so I'm just going to stick with one. How much memory? Two gigs. I think that should be the default. Um, I don't think you should ever go any lower than two gigs, even though, again, we're not really going to do anything with this DC. It's just going to handle um, some authentication for two isolated boxes. It still needs a little bit of memory to be able to do stuff with, so let's go with two. Use NAT, use bridge. Okay, host only networking. This is the one that we want to choose. That's fine. Create a new virtual disk. Absolutely. SCSI, sure. Okay, so how much space do I want on here? Well, that really depends on how big your test is going to be. This is going to be a domain controller. All I'm really going to have on there is Windows and some virtual disks that we'll talk about later when we actually get to the clustering part of it. But for right now, let's go ahead and do, oh, let's see how much space I have on C. I'll bring this over here so you can see it. So on C, I have about 87 gigs, and they're offering me 60. That sounds pretty good. Let's go with 60 gigs. I can do anything I need to in 60 gigs for this demo. So let's see, split into multiple files? Sure, why not? That's fine. Finish. Now it's going to create it, and it's going to start it up for me. And you'll see that it's going to start the Windows setup right away. Oh, as soon as I say power on. There we go. Now it can take a couple minutes to get up to these certain, to, to get through certain aspects of this. So I'm going to pause this frequently so that you don't have to sit there and wait for it. Okay, and here's that piece up. I'm going to go ahead and center this. So this is just your standard Windows screen. Fill out what you need to there. We're going to go with English. Install now. And I'm going to pause again. Okay, and we're back. Now, I don't really need to ins I don't really need to put a key in here. I'm going to center this right now so I'm gonna go ahead and skip it I think I can nope it looks like I can't skip it okay I'm gonna go get a key and I'll pause okay I got past that screen didn't want you to didn't want to give you my my Windows key and let's see do we want to do a core installation or server with GUI let's go ahead and do a server with GUI it's gonna make things a lot easier click next I accept the license, of course. Here, I'll show you so you can you can read through it all. There you go. You can slow down the video and read through it all if you want to. Next. Okay. Custom. I don't want to I don't want to upgrade. I don't have anything on this yet. So I want to do a custom install and it's going to give me the drive that I presented to it. You don't have to do anything here. You can create a a volume if you want to, but it'll create it for you anyway. So you just click next. And it's installing. So that's going to be a few minutes. I'm going to pause this and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, that finished. I've had no more intervention whatsoever. Uh, the setup finished and then it rebooted and here we are. It wants me to type in an admin password. Now ordinarily, I would say let's give it a nice strong password to make sure that nothing happens to it. This is on a closed network. It doesn't even have access to the internet. So I'm going to give it ASDF. ASDF and go ahead and try to break into it. See, see what happens. No, enter. Oh, it doesn't meet the complexity requirements. Ha, <laughs> fine. And then that should do it. There we go. Okay, so now that our first VM is built, let's go ahead and take a look around VMware just to see the kinds of things that are possible, right? So, of course, it says press Control alt delete to sign in. This is your Control alt delete button. If you press Control alt delete on your computer, it'll it'll 
bring it up on your computer, right? So you need a button here. We've got control alt, delete right there. Now, VM, these are the settings to this machine specifically, to this virtual machine. If you've got three or four VMs open, whichever one is active is going to be the one that you control through this menu. So you can power it on, you can restart it, you can suspend it, you can power it off. You can come in here into settings. If you realize that you've forgotten something, maybe you didn't add enough memory, maybe you want to change the network or add a network to it, right? Maybe you want to add more disk, something like that. Then you can come in here and you can make these changes. Some changes have to be made when the VM is off, so you may have to power it down first and then make the changes. But that's okay. VMware is pretty good at telling you which changes those are. And you've got some more options over here. Um, you can you can you can specify your working directory and whatnot. So uh, there are lots of things in here for snapshots, uh, access control. You can list all kinds of things in here, how you want the, uh, the time sync and the VMware tools to go. So lots of things to explore in here. Now, let's talk about snapshots because this is going to be really important. This is where we really get into the good stuff as far as VMs are concerned, right? You can come in here and you can say snapshot. I, you can say take a snapshot. I like to open up the snapshot manager and see what I've already got. So this is where if you wanted to test something, you would take a snapshot right now and then you could run it through as many tests as you like, revert back to the snapshot and be right back where you started and you wouldn't lose anything. So I quite often test my SQL setup like this when I'm scripting a, a SQL setup, right? When I'm writing a new feature into, into my SQL install script, then I'll open up a VM like this. I'll take a snapshot and then I'll test my script. Whether it works or doesn't work, I'll go ahead and revert back to the previous snapshot and try it again. So I can try my script multiple times like that and I don't have to spend a lot of time resetting my environment, like uninstalling SQL or reinstalling Windows, something like that. We're gonna use this snapshot quite a bit, really. So let's go ahead and close that. Okay, so we've got our DC built. We haven't installed the domain yet, but that's okay. Let's go ahead and get the other boxes ready first and then we'll put the domain on there. So we'll go back home and I'm going to breeze through these a little bit quicker just to show you how fast it can be. So I'm going to create a new virtual machine, tell it OK. I want to use my install disk. I want to use, nope, this guy's where I decided that was, right? Windows R264. There we go. That's fine. Up to 2012. Next, I want it to be called SQL node one. I'm going to get really creative. The location this time, I'm going to put on that other drive. So I'm going to go ahead and collapse that. And I'm going to put this on D. If I can find anything under D. There you go. It's going to take it a second here. There we go. And do I have, nope, I'm going to put a VMs folder there. So I'm going to put it right there. There we go. Nope, that's not what I meant to put. Not at all. I'm going to put that right there. There we go, VMs. So D VMs, perfect. How many processors? Oh, let's go ahead and go with a single processor again. It'll be fine. And two gigs uh, for SQL. Let's go ahead and go with four gigs. There we go. And I'm going to use the host only networking again. Create a new virtual disk. Absolutely. Instead of 60 gigs, let's give this one. Oh, let's go ahead and give it 60. It'll be fine. Again, I want this to go on D. Sorry, I can't seem to find the right. There we go. Tell it next and finished. And what that's going to do? Again, that's going to that's creating the drives right now. That's creating all the files right now. 
and then it's going to bring up the VM. I'm going to start it and we're going to go through the Windows setup again. So I'm going to go ahead and power this on. And I'm going to pause this and I'll come back when setup starts up. Okay, here's the setup. Go ahead and drag that up if I can. Yep, there we go. Okay, again, English. Install now. I'll pause that and come right back. Okay, I've entered in my Windows key. I'm going to come back and I'm going to say, give me the GUI version. Accept the terms. You want to choose custom. You don't need to do anything here. There we are, and the setup is now starting to copy files, so I'm going to pause this and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, so that install is done. And all I did was, once the, once the install finished, I just uh, gave it a password, the same password as I used on the DC, and now I'm just waiting for it to come back up. Now we've still got one more node to create, it's going to be SQL Node 2. There's absolutely no reason for me to sit here and make you watch me do that. So I'm going to go off camera, I'm going to create that one. Then when we come back in the next demo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to install the domain controller. I'll see you soon.